The creator of PTE AV Studio has alerted users of the software that there is an alternative file type other than PNG. PNG is the file type we've typically chosen when an image is partly transparent. But there is another alternative called WebP and that is supported by PTE AV Studio from version 10.5. The great benefit of the WebP format, which we can see on the right hand side here, is that it saves an image with transparency, but also with compression just like a JPEG. And as a result, you can see the files can be significantly smaller. So this WebP format allows us to save like a JPEG while retaining the transparent layer. So it's a good idea to use them when we make slide styles or when we're creating an executable show, a slideshow that's destined to be played back on a computer. Now here I have quite a detailed image opened up into Photoshop. Now we wouldn't normally save this as a PNG file if we're going to use it in its entirety, but because it's packed with detail, it would be a good example perhaps to compare by saving it as a PNG file and also as a WebP. If we want to save it as a WebP in Photoshop file, let's save as a copy. And in the save as type, right down the bottom is the option we need. Normally we have to go down there for the PNG, but we need to go right to the bottom for the WebP option. And when we click to save, we get a very familiar panel because we are used to seeing this sort of thing in our JPEG saves. And of course you can choose to save this at its largest file type, or as I've done here, you can reduce it to 80 and OK. So I suppose the $64,000 question is, does this compression of a WebP format affect image quality? Well, let's take a look at the few images you can see here. We'll view them full screen and you can decide. But I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now in normal circumstances we wouldn't be saving this image as a PNG file, we'd save it as a JPEG, but it will give us the opportunity to not only compare file size, but also the quality too. 5 megabyte is the size as a PNG, the WebP size is 414 kilobytes. Now if we keep our eyes around the number, in the front of that boat, as I jump backwards and forwards, we can try to determine if there's any change to the quality of the image. And I think we're likely to come to the conclusion there's very little, if any at all. Let's move on to the next one. And here we're really just concentrating on the balloon size. This balloon is floating on a transparent background, so we're not including the sky here. PNG size, 5 megabyte, quite significant really. But the WebP size, 210 kilobytes. And once again, if I jump backwards and forwards, as we look at the detail perhaps around the basket of the balloon, can we see any difference which is going to give us any problem at all? And I can't see any. Moving on to the next image, again we wouldn't normally save this as a PNG but it's packed full of information and we can see that reflected in the file size but the WebP size is merely 2.47 megabyte. And if you scan around the image as I jump backwards and forwards you can pick on any part of the image here and try to determine if that is going to give you a problem. And I will suggest probably not. And the last image is, well, a batch of three floating on a transparent background, 2.22 megabyte as a PNG, but only half a megabyte as a WebP file. So some significant savings and very few, if any, losses. 
Now I've always been very fussy with my image quality and my presentation. But I think from now on I'm going to be quite happy to switch from PNG to WebP. And as the balloon disappears, I'll see you next time.